up Sailor Senshi? My name is Sailor Snubs. Welcome to my YouTube channel all about Sailor Moon news and merch reviews. I am so excited because I just got back from Sailor Moon the Super Live out in Washington DC. Yes, I flew all the way across the country to see this musical. Luckily, I had family to stay with, which was wonderful. And I'm here to tell you all about the experience and what you can expect if you're going to the show in New York this weekend. So I will go ahead and start this video with a spoilerific review of what happened during the performance. So if you don't want to hear about that, if you want to be surprised this weekend in New York, go ahead and skip ahead to this time code right here. And that way you can get some pro tips of things that I recommend doing while you're at the theater. So that way you can get like the best of the best experience that you can possibly have when you go see Sailor Moon the Super Live. But if you want the spoiler version of what happens during the show, go ahead and stick around and don't skip ahead. And that way you can hear all about the review. So I couldn't really find a synopsis online, so I was pretty surprised when I went, but it's basically 60 minutes of musical and then the end 20 minutes, because the whole show is 80 minutes long, the end 20 minutes is a concert, which is put on by all of the cast. So the first 60 minutes of this musical is basically a portrayal of the first season of the manga slash anime where Beryl takes Tuxedo Mask, all of the Sailor Senshi have to teleport and find him, he's brainwashed, he tries to kill, kill Sailor Moon, Beryl ends up dying because Sailor Moon attacks her with her new scepter which is really cool and then everybody is happy hunky-dory and you know everything happens very well. It's basically that very end part from the first season of the anime and the first uh, chapters of the manga uh, that th that 60 minute musical is portraying on stage for y'all. Interestingly, they did not have a lot of speaking parts. It was mostly just music, a lot of choreography to kind of tell the story while they were dancing. Uh, they did have some translations on two different televisions, two very wide, large televisions on both sides of the stage. So you can understand the music Music if they were singing, but most of it was just like music, background noise. Um, they did a lot of screaming, like, you know, Sailor Moon would say, Tuxedo Kamen Sama! And then on the screen it would tell you, Tuxedo Mask! Which made me laugh a lot because I was like, I can... I can figure out what she was saying at that point. But most of it was not spoken at all. So there was barely any Japanese in the show. It was mostly just like music, lots of effects, lots of dancing and choreography, and then little bits and pieces here and there where they would actually translate it. So at the very beginning of the show, you actually don't get to see Sailor Moon or Usagi. You actually see Beryl with her four soldiers. So the soldiers come onto the stage and she's basically attacking them, turning them into gemstones, and then they disappear. The the only one that survives is Kunzite, and he is portrayed by a female in the show, and he is the only one that survives in this story. Now, Beryl kind of pantomimes or choreographs that she is after Usagi, so Kunzite goes out and he tries to find Usagi. So the first time that you actually get to see Usagi is when she's late for school very similar to the anime and manga. Uh, she actually ends up running down the aisle in the audience in the theater with a bunch of glitter behind her, which was so cute and very, very exciting. It was a wonderful way for her to make her entrance into the musical. Uh, and then she runs on stage. Of course, she's late for school that day. A bunch of enemies attack at the school yada yada yada. Eventually all the enemies disappear. I don't remember off the top of my head who saved her, if it was the Sailor Senshi or if it was Tuxedo Mask. It might have been Tuxedo Mask, but she ends up getting saved. Uh, all of the girls from the school, her as well as the four inner Sailor Senshi, um, all of them in their school uniforms, they end up going to Takashita Dori, which is Takashita Street in Tokyo, which is a real place, and that's very exciting, uh, to go shopping and to eat crepes, which is so cute, and to go to an arcade. Now when Usagi goes to the arcade, she's actually greeted by Mamo-chan, and they end up playing some arcade games. Of course, he's given her a hard time because he's such a bully in the early season. Uh, and then they, she kind of ends up like having this huge crush on him. The crush scene, her little dream sequence, is one of my favorite parts of the show. Uh, she ends up picking up off the stage this huge double heart. It's like the little Doki Doki hearts in Japanese. And she holds them up to her eyes and she's just like, <gasps> Tuxedo coming summer. It's the cutest thing ever. I was just laughing. I was laughing so hard. The crew ends up bringing out a couple of like carousel horses and they both hop on top of them. And Tuxedo Mask and Usagi are sitting there and they're like making all of these cute little like dream sequence poses together like they're in love. It was 
freaking adorable. I laughed so hard. It was one of my favorite parts of that musical. It was just, it was so good. Like their portrayal of those dream sequences from the anime and bringing it into real life in a musical was just so perfect. Like they did such a good job. They even had this improv part where um, Tuxedo Kamenzama, he, he rides off on one of the horses off stage and on his way out, he's like has his cape in front of him and then he hits the horse on the butt. Like he's actually getting it to gallop. And I was just like, Good job, good job. <laughs> Interestingly, there is no Luna in the show. The most we got of Luna was a portrayal on the back silk screen that they had, uh, that they were using for a lot of the imagery that they were um, kind of projecting onto the screen in the background. So you did see to get to see a little bit of Luna in the background during the Takashita Dori moment. Now, eventually all of the Sailor Senshi are introduced because some baddies come back and they try to attack Usagi. Usagi is like fascinating to to barrel so she really wants Usagi. Uh, so all of the sailors and she end up coming onto stage. Uh, eventually Usagi transforms. You get to hear the entire sequence of all of the characters transforming which is so cool. You don't see them transform but they all appear on stage with their transformations which is really cool. The lighting that they used during the show was absolutely gorgeous and I loved how they were using projectors for like art from the manga, art from the anime uh, to kind of bring Bring the show to life. Like they were using different imagery for things that you couldn't normally act out on stage. Like for example that dream sequence, like they had, you know, Takashi Tadori in the background along with Luna, like little portrayals of Luna, which was really cool. So all of the Sailor Senshi end up getting introduced, which was a huge moment and it was amazing and I may have cried the whole time because I was just like, this is what I wanted it, my childhood to be like. They all come on stage. They end up getting their butts kicked because they're trying to fight a bunch of baddies, including Kunzite. Uh, and then Tuxedo Mask gets kidnapped. So he gets stolen away. Of course, Usagi is devastated at this point and she just cries her eyeballs out and it's really really hard to watch it was really sad so the senshi of course they come together and they're like we can do this we can save the day let's use our sailor senshi power to transport to wherever barrel is along with tuxedo mask just like the anime so they all end up transporting to barrel's hideout i guess you could say uh and that's also where tuxedo mask ends up being the sailor senshi are getting their butts kicked by kunzite uh eventually and this is one part that i really wanted to point out about the show is that uh, they brought in one of the parts from the manga that I was not expecting at all, but it made me gasp, like literally gasp in the audience. It was when Sailor Venus, um, she requests, like she she requests the the sword from the manga, uh, so that she can kill Kunzai. So she she grabs her sword and then she goes in to attack Kunzai, and then all of a sudden she gets this realization that her and Kunzai had this prior life together because in the manga those two were meant to be they were like true loves so she ends up going in to attack him but then she drops the sword because she's just like oh my god like we used to be in love like what is this Kunzai has this realization too so they almost they get they get so close to each other on stage and they almost touch and then Beryl realizes what is going on and she kills Kunzai just like that so she turns him into a gemstone Venus is devastated she tries to reach out for the gem zone and it just disappears into infinity I don't know it just disappears <laughs> at that point I remember looking at my friends and I was just like oh my god like we were not expecting that scene at all but i was just so happy that it brought it in because it was it's one of those very very like little known secrets about the manga is that you know the sailor senshi had these these prior loves with the soldiers that beryl has brainwashed to work with her so the fact that they included that part with kunzite and venus was just so cool so then we have the tuxedo mask part where he's completely brainwashed he's trying to kill all of the sailor senshi all of them end up getting like the crap knocked out of him. The only one left is Usagi or Sailor Moon. Uh, he ends up really kicking her butt too. And eventually Sailor Moon is able to tell Tuxedo Mask like, hey, we're in love. And you know, he ends up being fine. Beryl is also still alive. She tries to finish off Sailor Moon. Of course, Sailor Moon is able to, well, it looks like she's going to die, but then she comes back with this awesome new scepter and she's able to kill off Queen Beryl and then Beryl disappears. Sailor Moon, of course, passes out. Tuxedo Mask comes out, he kisses her, 
he brings her back to life. They end up having this beautiful moment together with all of these gorgeous lights around them. And then they both get up and everything's fine and everything's back to normal and yay, Sailor Moon saved the day. So it was a great, wonderful ending and it was super happy and beautiful. And then everybody came out, all of the cast, including Beryl and Kunzite and the four cast members that were playing the monsters throughout the show. And then all of the inner senshi and Tixido Kamenzama, they all come out, they all take their bows and the entire female cast, which was is so freaking cool that this entire cast is female. They all take a bow and they all thank everybody and then they leave off the stage. And of course the entire audience is standing there just like screaming at the top of our lungs like woo! And I knew it wasn't going to end because at the very beginning they had told us if you purchased one of these light sticks you could bring it out during the concert. And the concert was 20 minutes long. That was the next part of the show. All right so then we had the concert and this was really cool because we were actually given a chance to hear each of the different characters sing and have their own little solos and they also sang a lot of classics too which was awesome so a couple of songs that they sang and i wrote it down so that i didn't forget they sang la soldier which is one of my absolute favorite songs from the classic series there was moonlight densetsu uh the theme song that was all all of it was sung so they got a standing ovation and then they came back out and did the theme song and everybody freaking freaked out like it was so cool Tuxedo Kamensama had her own song, which was also incredible, and you also got to hear Beryl sing too, which was great. So as far as the show goes as a whole, I wanted to tell you a little bit about like the choreography, the lighting and effects, and how I would review them as far as singing goes, and how the characters were portrayed. So first off was the choreography, and I would say that they did an excellent job. Um, I have done choreography in musicals before, back in high school, I've done several musicals, and it is hard to stay on beat, especially when you're expected to sing and act at the same time. It's a tough job to do, but they did great. Like there were many times when all of them were doing choreography together, like jumping over things and ducking down under attacks and stuff. And the not only just the dance moves were choreographed really well, but also the fighting sequences. Like they were very much on beat. It seemed really fine tuned, which I was really happy about. I would say that the tech and the lighting really brought the show to life because there was so much of it and there was so much happening on stage that there was really no one place that you could look at and you know know the whole story like you had to like dart your eyes around a little bit to understand like what was happening especially during the fighting sequences they used a lot of 2d and 3d effects along with the lighting to really bring the show to life as well uh, which i loved and i thought it was awesome how the different cast members interacted with all of those things happening on stage the set design was very simplistic in nature, but they used all of the different props and things to their advantage, like fully. So there was one silk screen on the back that they were using to project different images behind the cast. And there was also a silk screen in the front of the stage that they were also projecting scenes onto, which you could kind of see through. I have seen this before in a few different mus musicals before, like, um, I wonder if, was it Hamilton or? I, I have seen that kind of imagery happen before where they're using a silk screen in front of the cast members and the cast members are doing something behind it, kind of interacting with what is projected onto it. It's very hard to explain, but when you see it, you'll understand what I'm talking about. They did have a couple of stairs that they could walk up, like Beryl used this pretty constantly, and they also used it for the fighting sequences where they would walk up the stairs and then be on like a top podium platform that they could also use for like different things, like they could yell down to the people that are on the stage or whatever it might be. So th it was simplistic. There wasn't a lot, of, a lot of like decor or anything like that. It was mostly the lighting that they were using and those 3D effects and silk screens for all of the imagery. Each of the characters did receive some kind of solo throughout the show, so you did get to hear each of them sing. Uh, they did lots of classics, which was wonderful, and they did a lot of transitions that went really quickly. So they, like for example, when they sang La Soldier, there was only one verse of this. They didn't do the second verse, they just did the first one, ended with the bridge or, or the chorus, and then they ended up going on to another song, uh, which was kind of cool, because it kept it really upbeat the entire time. I am entirely surprised that this cast was able to continue going because it's so energetic the whole time. Like you have to work out for that kind of 
that kind of show. It was just crazy. <laughs> now, as far as the characters go, I did want to tell you who was in the cast for the show in the US. Sailor Moon, or Skino Usagi, was played by Tomomi Kasai. Uh, she was excellent. She was so cute and adorable, and I loved her smile, and she portrayed Usagi so well, especially like the clumsy, cute, you know, 14-year-old girl that is Sailor Moon. <laughs> uh, Sailor Mercury was played by Momoko Kaechi. Um, Momoko was incredible. Her voice was like that of an angel. She had excellent pitch. Uh, she she was able to draw out notes without being shaky or anything like that. And she just sounded so good. And she was so cute, like perfect character for Sailor Mercury. She did an excellent job. She was she ended up being one of my favorites, which was kind of interesting because Sailor Mercury as the character from the show is not one of my favorite characters. Although she probably should be because I'm a nerd and so is she. So that would make sense. <laughs> Sailor Mars is Yui Hasegawa. Yui Hasegawa owned the stage every single time she came on. Like, she portrayed Sailor Mars perfectly. Um, I didn't like her singing style as much as I liked, for example, uh, Sailor Mercury's, but she was still really good, so I thoroughly enjoyed seeing her on stage. She was really cool. I would happily see Yui again in a show. <laughs> and then for Sailor Jupiter, we had Kana Matsuzaki. Kana also had amazing choreography skills, and she was like right there on every single beat. Um, I thought she did really well as far as like, you know, she had that really strong low voice, uh, but she was kind of shaky at certain parts. So I think maybe she was new to singing or something, but she still had really good pitch. So I was very happy with her performance as well, especially during the fighting sequences. Like she portrayed Jupiter, just like I would imagine Jupiter being in real life. So that was really cool. <laughs> Sailor Venus was portrayed by Yu Nakanishi. Yu was gorgeous. Like, she was so pretty whenever she came on stage. Like, she portrayed Venus perfectly, um, especially, like, her different stances and stuff. Like, she was, I don't know, it, it felt like she was Venus. So I was also very, very happy with her, too. I Queen Beryl was played by Makoto Aikawa, and Makoto... She was awesome. She was like scary on stage. Really cool. Um, also felt like, you know, her singing wasn't perfect, but she was very, very strong and her character portrayal was pretty good. <laughs> Kunzai was played by Rayo Sonata. Now, Rayo Sonata. She was Kunzai, like 100% exactly what I would imagine Kunzai being on stage, like creepy and strong and silent and like really just, I don't know, menacing almost. So she was cool. Like I really, really liked her character a lot. Would love to see that again. Would buy a ticket again just to see Rayo. And lastly, of course, but definitely not least, is Tuxedo Mask, who was played by Riona Tatemichi. And Riona made me basically want to go gay. Yeah, like, she was awesome. Like, she was sexy. She was up there and she, like, owned the stage. And I could totally understand why Usagi would have a crush on Tuxedo Mask. I was like, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Now, during the entire show, I will say that I cried. Like, I was bawling. It was just so reminiscent of everything that I wanted to see when I was a kid. And every single moment of the show was just portrayed so well by this cast and this crew that I was... I was completely floored. I was completely like inundated with information coming from this stage or during the show. And it was just beautiful. Like I loved every single bit of it. And I don't know, it just made me bawl. It made me go into tears so many times because I was just like, this is what I wanted to see when I was a little girl. Like when I was first obsessed with Sailor Moon, this is the kind of thing that I wanted. And I'm so happy that they finally gave 
their U.S. audience a chance to see this kind of show because it was it was just incredible. It was so beautiful. And now I want to see all the musicals. <laughs> okay, so that's it for my synopsis of the play. So I did want to give you a few pro tips as well in case you are going to the New York show this weekend. So pro tip number one is sit along the aisle in the orchestra if you can. The reason why I say this is because during the concert, the different characters, um, it's the Inner Sailor Senshi and Tuxedo Kamensama, they all come out into the aisles and they high five everybody along the aisle. So I was actually able to high five every single one of the Inner Senshi and Tuxedo Mask, which was awesome because I didn't pay for a VIP ticket or anything. They happened to come out into the aisle to us. And I was just like, this is great because I was able to do that high five. And that was really cool. I'm so happy that they did that because it, it kind of gave us a little something extra that we were not expecting whatsoever. It was very, very cool. So much appreciate that they came out into the aisles and ended up running up and down them. I'm sure that was a lot of work, but everybody in that audience was screaming, like legit screaming, including myself. I was freaking out. Pro tip number two, buy your merch in advance. I know that there's probably going to be some eBay scalpers out there and you want to get your chance to get as much of this stuff as you can because chances are you won't get another chance to buy it. So I did end up buying each of the merch items that they had available. I'll show you those a little bit more when I go to my b-roll from the actual concert. But this is the thing that I wanted to point out here is this $30 light stick which does light up and it's very very pretty to use. So this is the light stick. You can use this during the concert. So if you buy this before the show, not at the ending, then you can actually like beat it along with the music as they're doing it. And it does switch through all the different colors too. So when one of the characters is having a solo, you can switch to their color like Sailor Jupiter and you can beat it along to the music while they're singing. And that was really cool. It was really fun to like partake in that. Obviously, I'm never going to use this thing again, but it's still really pretty. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to mention is make sure that you have the app downloaded for Pretty Guardians or you check your email. Now, I am aware that currently, as of time of recording, the application and the website for Pretty Guardians Fam Club is down, so you can't actually access it. But if you pull up your email that is tied to your account, they did send out an email this morning that said, hey, make sure to pull up this email while you're at the concert at the venue because because if you're a fan club member with an active membership, then you can receive one of these stickers. Now, I did have the app downloaded. I was just able to show them that I have an active membership and I was able to get one of these stickers. Unfortunately, even though I have two memberships, I only have one login. I'm not sure why that is. I probably just forgot my other login. So I was only able to get one sticker. I was hoping to get two so I could give my friend one, but unfortunately that didn't happen. However, most people aren't like me. Most people just have one because they're not crazy. So just log in, see if you can get an image of your active membership or just check your email and make sure you pull that up. Just look for, there's a Japanese lady that was out there with like a huge stack of stickers that she was handing out. Um, I feel like she didn't hand out very many at the Washington DC show because people didn't know how to access the application. So download it ahead of time so that you don't have that same problem. The other thing I wanted to mention is I'm not really sure the VIP ticket would have been worth it since all you got was a free fan. I did see them giving the fans out to the VIP ticket holders and you also got like a high five at the end or something like that. But I got to high five them when they ran through the aisle and I bought this from somebody in Japan for like $10. So I feel like I got a much better deal by just having a proxy in Japan ship it to me and high-fiving them from the audience with my regular seat next to the aisle. So yeah, save some money. Okay, so with that said and that whole wrap-up of my experience, which was incredible, I highly recommend going if they still have tickets available. It's so worth it. It was just such a good show. It was high energy. It was gorgeous. Everything about it was just incredible. You could feel the energy coming off of the audience and you could see how much joy the cast was getting out of the interactions that they were receiving from people. Like us singing along. I hope they heard us singing Japanese because a lot of people out there were singing the songs in Japanese, even though we don't necessarily understand the words. But hey, we know how to sing the words. <laughs> Might not be able to translate it, but that's okay. And I just want them to realize that you know, Sailor Moon has this huge international group of fans. There's so many of us. And just the fact that they finally brought this musical to us after 
20 plus years of waiting for this kind of interaction with US fans is huge. And I really hope that they're like using these musicals as an experiment to see and kind of kind of understand like what level of fandom they have over here because it's it's a very large fan base. I traveled cross country to see this musical and I'm sure a lot of other people did too. And I think that's so important to understand and it's nice to finally get kind of that I don't know. I feel I feel noticed as a fan. I feel recognized and noticed finally as a US fan and I don't feel like I have to necessarily travel to Japan to see one of these musicals, which was a really really big deal and thank you to the directors, to the people that decided to bring Sailor Moon the Super Live out here. Just thank you. Arigato gozaimashita because it is so important to us US fans that we're actually getting like recognized as people that really enjoy this show and are passionate about it. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to past me so you can see some actual b-roll and see some shout outs from uh, the show and see some people that I was able to meet. I hope that you enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I realize it's long, but I'm really happy that you decided to stick around this long. Go ahead and link below, hit subscribe, like, comment if you haven't already, and I will see you on the flip side. Jane. What up Sailor Senshi? I'm Sailor Snubs. Welcome to my YouTube channel all about Sailor Moon news and reviews. And today I am in Washington DC for Sailor Moon the super live. Ah! I'm so excited. There's tons of people lined up behind me right now. And for some reason, we found a really short line. So I'm pretty stoked. It looks like we're going to be able to get in and get merch really quickly. I can't wait. I'm so excited. This is going to be great. Ah! I'm so excited. All right, everybody. Welcome to Warner Theater. Everyone's coming in. So excited. I'm gonna f buy all the merch. I'm here! This is so cool. I'm inside the theater and it looks incredible. And that's just a silk screen. The actual set is right behind it. I'm, I can't wait until this thing opens up. It's so awesome being inside a theater that's like filling up with Sailor Moon fans. Everybody's still outside getting their merch and you know actually getting through the line so it's not full yet but I've already seen a few people that I recognize. So I saw Sailor Moon Obsession and I saw Sailor Samara which I will definitely be shouting them out on the show so I will try to get them on the show with me but this is great. We're gonna have a blast. It's gonna be awesome. Hello ladies. So I am joined here by my friend Elizabeth. Do you want to tell them what you do? I'm an author. I write urban fantasy and paranormal romance. My newest paranormal romance just came out. Look me up, Elizabeth Kirk with an E, author on Instagram. I'll put her link down in the show notes. You can actually buy her books right on Amazon, which is wonderful. And don't you have an Audible one coming out? I have two that are out on Audible and iTunes and Amazon in so audiobook. Cool. So and a third cool. coming. Yeah, really, really good stuff, so highly recommend. You should definitely check out her books. Like, I I thoroughly enjoy them, so great stuff. I love your stuff, Elizabeth. Hi, I love your stuff. <laughs> and my friend Leah. Still here. Still here. <laughs> Still here from the other YouTube channel, that's right. <laughs> Leah has joined me for the entire day, my other Mooney fandom girlfriend. Yay! So I actually have people to hang out with here, since I don't have very many, like, real-life Sailor Moon friends. So y'all are well, you a have few two. of the rare. I have two. Yeah. I have two. Yay! So we're going to have a blast tonight. Super excited to see the show. Um. Like, <laughs> if, if I can't, if the expressions of our excitement aren't coming through right now, we're really excited. So, yeah. This is going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. I'm so excited. Oh my god. So I don't want to take the poster out of the wrapper because they have it nicely coiled up and I have to travel home to San Francisco and I don't want it to get destroyed so I'm not going to take that out but I'll show you a picture right here of what it looks like. And then I also wanted to show you the other things that I got. So the poster was $10. So we have medium and large unisex t-shirts that were available for 30 bucks. They got this pretty silhouette on the front of the live cast with a pretty crescent moon in the background. Japanese says Sierra Moon, the super live, Bishoujo Senshi, or pretty guardian right there. It's Gildan Ultra Cotton, which isn't the cheapest of the cheap, but according to some friends that I have who do print screening, it's not that bad, but you know, it's it's cheap. It's not like the super nice Bella type of shirts that I usually prefer. Bella's my favorite. So this is the back. It's just like any other concert. 
t-shirt, honestly, that you would get. It has the dates. So this is the first one premiering in the U.S. And then it also has the sailor symbols, pretty guardian, sailor moon, blah, blah, blah. All right, so that's the t-shirt for 30 bucks. And then there was this for $30 as well. So this is a light stick with a lanyard. The lanyard says, it has the Sailor Senshi symbols on it. It also says the Super Live right there. And the other side just says the Super Live again and again. Nice little lanyard. And then this light stick has the silhouettes again, the same logo. It says Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon Super Live. And to turn it on, you do that. You just click down on the bottom and then it cycles through the Sailor Scout colors. And apparently we can use these during the concert, so that's going to be really cool. And to turn it off, you just hold it down to shut the whole thing off. It looks like it takes regular AA batteries, so I'll be able to use this in the future, which is great. And it is a hard plastic, it's not foam or anything like that. So pretty cool swag, kind of wish they had more or different things. Um, I do have the fan from the Japanese show as well. Uh, sitting in my purse down there somewhere, but you've already seen, seen that on the channel, so I won't get it out right now uh, So yeah, I'm just gonna walk around a little bit hand out some stickers and uh, Have a good time. So I just found my girl here. Her name is Stacy She actually found one of my videos from my Japan, Japan vlogs when I went over there and checked out all the real-life Sailor Moon locations So Stacy, thank you for saying hi. Of course. I was so excited I saw her down at the bottom and I had to come and say hello because I'm such a big fan and Aww. your video was so much fun. <laughs> well, your hair looks incredible. I love Thank your you. outfit. Can we show it off? Yes. So fancy. Oh my god, you're adorable. Seriously. <laughs> Twinning with Sailor Moon. I love it. <laughs> so I'm totally creeping in like somebody's seat space area over here, but look who I found. Hi. Introduce yourself. I am Sailor Samara. She also has a YouTube channel that's absolutely amazing. Her collection room is like the thing of dreams. So if you ever inspire or aspire to be a Sailor Moon collector, definitely check out her channel. I'll put the link in the channel. It's just incredible. What's your favorite part of your collection? Probably my blushes. I have way, way too many of them. You know? That, yeah, I can see that with you. Yeah. The, your plushies are so cute. I know. I They're love them. They're adorable. I would trade them in for <laughs> Yeah. So check her out. Sailor Samara. Link in the show notes. Okay, so there's no recording or photography during the show, so I will see you guys after. Bye! We'll buy more tickets. It's yes. amazing. Yes. Please, please come back. <laughs> Arigatou. 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 Oh yeah. I bought a one. <laughs> Y'all are so cute. Show me that moon stick. I want to see the moon stick. Show me the moon stick. Hell yes, girl. Yeah, she's got the moon stick. Oh, oh hell yeah, girl. Hell yeah. <laughs> Oh, I love this freaking state, man. This is yes. great. <laughs> you look awesome. Yes. Thank Bye. you. <laughs>